can gather back around to the highlighter stage because we have Nafisa Collier. I call her Fee, and so if you hear me say Fee, same person. Um, but welcome to the stage. <laughs> Minnesota Lynx's very own superstar in her own right. So your WNBA journey has been a really golden one for you. Can you talk about how you've grown as a player from your rookie year until now? Ooh, okay. Um, I would say my growth, you know, obviously every year you try to get better on the court, you know, see what you did last year, try to get better. But what I've really tried to grow in is my leadership, you know, being named co-captain is a big responsibility. So trying to be the best leader that I can on my team and making sure that we go as far as we can. And then co-captain means a lot of trust within the coach. So how are you able to get the coach's trust? Coach Reeve isn't, I, I, don't, I don't feel like she's like one that trusts easily, so... <laughs> Uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, it was after my rookie year, and I guess she just felt her and she talked with Syl, you know, our other captain. Um, I guess, you know, they had that faith in me, and so that's something I want to live up to. You know, they saw that in me, so I want to make them proud. And you were here, obviously, for NBA All-Star, but you've been an All-Star yourself on the W side. So can you talk about what it takes? I, I have a big pot right? And I'm trying to mix these ingredients together, what makes me an all-star. So what makes me an all-star in your book? Uh, I would say, I mean, for me, like personally, what I like is when I see hustle on both sides of the floor. Mm. So not only offense, obviously everyone wants to score points and that's super fun. But to me, an all-star works on defense too. Like you're trying to get stops. You're not just letting other people do all the work. Did you always love basketball? Uh, soccer was my first love. Actually. Oh, shoot. Yep. You are just like Candace. This is like Candace. <laughs> like okay, tell me about your soccer days. Yeah, uh, my dad grew up playing soccer. He's from West Africa, and that's like the sport there. So I played soccer for like 10 years. I thought that was going to be my college sport. And then I was playing softball one day, and the coach was like, hey, you're tall. Want to come try out for my basketball team? It's like, I haven't played that sport yet. Sure. And then it was kind of left soccer in the dust. So your dad, West Africa, can you talk about the pride that you have or with knowing where your family's from, first of all, and what, what part of his culture you take with you? Yeah, it's really cool. Um, we can trace, you know, our family lineage on my dad's side for generations and generations, which is really cool, and I think it's really special uh, and so proud. I mean, I grew up, obviously, with so many stories from my dad, um, surrounded by the community. I, we had a lot of people in St. Louis where I'm from, uh, Missouri. There's a lot of us, so we go to African parties every weekend. My hey. favorite foods are African foods, so obviously it's a part of my who I am and my culture, and um, I'm really proud of it. And generations before, but you have another generation coming. Do we want to get into it? Let me know. If you want to. Okay, motherhood. <laughs> oh, my God. She's expecting, y'all. She's expecting. So <laughs> what's been the most exciting part about knowing that you're going to be a mom? So you already are a mom, knowing that you're a mom now. Yeah, it's crazy. The most exciting part, you said? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just, like, so excited to meet her. I think it's going to be so cool. Uh, like, the ultrasounds are obviously my favorite because you can see, like, a little bit what they look like. Uh, so, yeah, I think everything's exciting. It's my first time, so everything's new. And I know that we, we talked about, you know, being a young athlete and, and expecting. So what was that, like, the initial, like, knowledge of you being pregnant? What were your first thoughts, like, yeah. knowing that you're, you know... An yeah. athlete. Uh, it was shocking. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, obviously it was really exciting. My, one of my first thoughts is obviously I just came off my season, so I'm, like, calculating in my brain how many months until <laughs> the next season starts. Like, am I going to be able to play? Things like that. What are you looking forward to most about it? Just, I think, you know, learning who she is. It, obviously she came for me. She's a little person and just like getting to know her personality and mm -hmm. helping to form that, you know, trying to make her the best person she can be. That's beautiful. And I've loved over the years getting to know your personality, but not a lot of people do know your personality right now. So how would you describe Nafisa? Uh, I would describe myself, I mean, for the most part, I feel like I'm pretty chill, but I feel like I'm a weirdo too, especially like when I get more comfortable. Um, do kind tell. Of weird. What's weird? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't have like a specific weird tick or anything, but like, I just <laughs> not me making life. you nervous. Like. <laughs> but now you're in New York on the off season. So how's New York been? New York's awesome. It's a lot different than Missouri, where I'm from. Uh, but we live in the city, so it's like really cool. We see obviously all the lights out of our apartment. Um, it's a lot different, but it's so fast paced. It's fun. And basketball is taking you so many places. Everywhere, yeah. Everywhere. What's your favorite? place that it's taken you? I would have to say 
Italy or Spain. Europe is beautiful. So we took an Italy trip when I was in college, and it was amazing. Talk about it. Uh, just the culture. I mean, I love history, and we went to Rome, Venice, and Florence. So um, all the history that's in Rome, obviously. And then we got to go to, like, the Vatican, which was awesome. We got to go on, like, the gondolas, mm -hmm. just do, like, normal touristy things. And the food, obviously, was so, so good. Just the whole experience was awesome. What's overseas life like? I know a lot of people are curious. We hear a lot of bad. We hear a lot of good. Just what was your experience overseas? Uh, very short. So the first time was in 2020. I was in China. Uh -huh. I was there for 10 days because coronavirus hit there first. Yep. So I didn't really experience it. But last year I was in France and it was, it was really cool. I loved my team. Oh, I was in Southern France. So it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then going back to the W in the summertime. And I always say the WNBA is so important. So why do you think the WNBA is so important? Uh, well, it's my career. So that's why I think it's to put Outside food the on the table. <laughs> Outside of, Outside of the fact it pays you yeah. money. Well, that's the most important part. <laughs> now, um, I think it does such a good job of promoting women in sports, and especially, like, our league, we're so outspoken. Like, if we have a problem with anything, you'll know about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, like, so empowering that not only are we beasts on the court, on the court, but um, we speak out for what we believe in, and we're really vocal about it. Does that ever scare you? Uh, no, I think it's really empowering. It's not scary at all. And maybe the only scary part is um, it kind of puts you out of your comfort zone, especially, like I said, my personality is pretty laid back. But it forces you to kind of recognize what's not right in the world and um, recognize that you have a big platform and it's kind of your responsibility to speak out on what you believe in. Speaking of platforms, you have your own, little, you know, things going on outside of basketball. And we've yeah. heard more from you uh, leisurely in the past year and a half or two years. So mm -hmm. can you talk about your other projects and why you decided to pursue things outside of basketball. Yeah, so I started a company with my fiance uh, Through the Lens, and it's basically a platform uh, for athletes. It's for athletes, um, just making sure that they get what they deserve, and it's also about empowering women. That's kind of the shortened version, because I could really go into a lot of detail, but I don't think we have <laughs> enough time. Uh, but yeah, it's really a platform for athletes. Okay, okay, and then since we don't hear you speak often, right? What is the message you want the world to know from you? About me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, on the court stuff is one thing. Like, obviously, I want to go down in history as a, a great player, one of the best. But I want people to remember me for um, who I am as a person. You know, I want them to remember how I made them feel. Hopefully, it was good, uh, being a good teammate, things like that. Okay. And what's the career high for you? It could be on or off the court, but okay. in your career. Uh, well, on the court, it was probably winning a, cha a championship in college. That was an amazing feeling. It's giving Connecticut. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, off the court, honestly, the bubble was really fun for me as a player. I was right out of college, so it kind of felt like that college experience again. And we bonded so much with our team. We got to do a lot of stuff. Like, I think our team really took advantage of that, so it was fun. What's a Minnesota Lynx team bonding moment look like? We went to the beach. We went on a, <laughs> did. Like, a boat. We had our Lynx lounge where we had, like, games we were playing. We had, like, a disco ball in there, like a strobe light. We just make fun. See, if I hosted a game night for you, what game needs to be in there? Uh, taboo. I love Taboo. Taboo's great. Yep. Speaking of games, we're going to make this interactive. So anybody in the crowd that has questions. Okay, my guys. My guys. What is the biggest challenge you faced from developing as a player in your entire life? Ooh, the biggest challenge I faced. Um, I mean, I can tell you my coming to the league moment when I was a rookie. Yeah, let's hear it. So <laughs> in college, I was a four player, so like a post player almost, and I transitioned to the three, and I had to guard one of my former teammates, like running off all these screens and stuff. She dropped 30 on me that 30. game. So that was my welcome to the league. Embarrassing. I got roasted for three film sessions for that game. So first of all, congrats on the pregnancy. Thank you. So, yeah. So, what type of parent do you think you're gonna be? Oh. What type of mom? Are you gonna Are you gonna make her play ball? Or what What do you think you're gonna be? What does that look like to you? Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna make her play sports. I feel like, I mean, hopefully it comes naturally. Obviously, I love sports, but if she wants to play the tuba, she can play the tuba. Like, I'm not gonna force it. Um, I want to be a chill mom, but I feel like I'm not going to be like. She's going to need to be respectful, things like that. Like, I want to be laid back, but I want to be a chill mama, go to timeout. Yeah. 
I'm not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. I want to be that, but I don't know. What's your favorite pair of shoes to wear on the court? My favorite shoes to wear on the court, KDs. I've been wearing them for like two seasons now. They're super comfortable. I love all the different designs, so his are my favorite. Dream team to play on. Oh, dream team to play on. You're trying to set me up. I have to say Minnesota. <laughs> You're trying to set me up here. <laughs> Look at me sign I play on Minnesota. Okay, any team besides Minnesota? Um, I think it'd be really cool to play with Sue Bird, so I'm going to say the Storm. Okay. And I'd love to win a chip, so they I got take, Sue, they got it, Sue. Hot take, Nafisa wants to play on the Storm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, Cheryl's going to be like, no. Anyway, but we have to end with a Mount Rushmore of women's basketball. I can't, I can't let you go without oh. giving me, give me the Mount Rushmore. I'm going to give you the Mount Rushmore of the people that I've been able to play with and against. Okay. So I'm going to say Sylvia Fowles, uh, Diana Taurasi, uh, Sue Bird, Candace Parker. How many are on the mount? Five? Yeah. I'll give you a starting five. And I would say, um, you know, I've always wanted to play with Sloot. She's, like, okay. she's an amazing point guard, so I'm going to put her on there. So this is going to get spicy. One last thing. I want a song affiliated with all of them and you. So, like, pick a song. I know it's outlandish, but hey. <laughs> or you can give me a playlist of three that will, like, summarize y'all as, as a squad. Uh, I'd be like, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> we I love ain't. it. I love it. Give me that one. Just one song? I can't get two more? Uh, I got five on it. Oh, that's cute. Got five Come on. on. And uh, what's that Drake song? My team, uh, my team good. They don't really need a mascot now. No. Does anyone know? It's about headlines. About? Uh, I don't know. I got my team. You got yours. What is that? Come Help on. us out. Help me. Nobody. Okay. My team against your team. I forgot what it's called. Pete, that ain't no. Some song. kind of Drake song. What you say? Oh, I got some really big teams. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you just you. say yeah because you want to end this discussion, but it's fine. Thank you. So I got much. the other two songs. <laughs> Look, we got to stand up and show you off today. Come on. Ugh. Woo. Look at the mother, yes, girl, giving overall realness. We love it here. We love it here. Thank you, boo. Yes, thanks for having me. It was fun.